greatest influence a coach has over this not coming to fruition happens before the handshake. It lies in recruiting great kids from great families like Reed Seligman, Colin Fennerty, and David Evans. I did that at Duke and continue to do this, uh, do this to this day. It is truly why when each one of those captains to a man looked me in the eye, I knew I knew the truth. You know what loyalty is? Can you imagine when 50 people believe one truth and 50 million believe another, and over a 20-month period, nobody wavers, nobody flinches, nobody caves in when at times the pressure seemed unbearable? Leadership, it first requires patience and thoughtfulness. So often, true leaders act accordingly and, and must decide do the needs of the few outweigh the needs of the many. Fact and thoroughness are paramount in your decision making. All outcomes must be anticipated. Tough decisions require guts and steadfastness. But in the end, it's about the truth and what is right. The truth. We coaches are bottom line people. So boiling it down, there is one value that stands above the rest. It is the truth. Your ability to be br brutally honest to your players, administrators, and alums. You can never deviate from this core value. Sugarcoating it doesn't help anybody. They might not like what you have to say or decide, but if it's based on what tr is true and right, you and your program will continue to earn the respect it deserves. My 14-year-old da daughter, during this recent episode in our lives, asked me one day, quote, Daddy, if you tell the truth, why do you need a good memory? Credibility. It, it, it's an outcome that results from the truth. For me, it always is better to say less than more. Those long-winded speeches or, or emotional post-game tirades, when you say things you regret or can't or won't take back, this will kill your credibility. Hey, I say this from experience. In my younger days, I've done them all. Accountability begins when you as a coach establish who and what your players represent. They must understand, understand from the beginning they represent each other, their coaches, the alums, the parents, and the end of the university they attend. Therefore, if you understand who you represent and the expectations that are established, when those expectations are not met, you must be held accountable. In the end, it cannot be, be perceived as a burden, but a responsibility they must embrace. Recently, I was asked, Coach, what do you want your legacy to be at Duke? I can tell you it's not about anything that ever happened on the field. I hope our legacy is that we graduated 100% of our players, and my proudest moment came when I was long gone from my post as the Duke head and lacrosse coach. At a player-only meeting in May of 06, the team collectively decided, in spite of all the scrutiny, harassment, and media pressure that they had endured and that would follow them once they returned to school in September, with no guarantee the program would be reinstated, nobody was leaving. It would have been easy for any and all to quit or transfer. No one would have been, would have been surprised. They decided to stay the course and finish what they started. As their for, former coach, that was my proudest moment. And early in March of 06, myself, my family, coaches, and players were on top of the world. Our team was picked preseason number one. On paper, it was by far the most experienced and talented group we had to date. We had over 700 young men coming to our camp that summer. We just finished a major addition on our family home of 14 years in Duke Forest. Our family was entrenched in the community. That was the greatest of times. Within a few short days, we were all cut off at the knees. In the summer of, in the summer of 06, it was the worst. Not only did I lose the job we had coveted for 16 years, but it looked like my coaching career was over due to no wrongdoing on our part. I applied to three different universities and couldn't even get an interview. Those were the dark days for myself, my wife, and my children. In coaching, it's all about making something a positive. It's about the next play, not the last one. We live in the present, not the past. If, if I believe when coaches do it right, it becomes about one thing, the players. We are here to guide, educate, motivate, support, and discipline when needed. It becomes the example we set for them to follow. The greatest men in my life have been the most humble, the most selfless, and most often my coaches, men like Jack Moran and Chuck Rubin. In conclusion, this case has exposed much and taught tremendous lessons to many. At this year's Final Four, I had the honor to speak to the Duke team one final time. Unfortunately, after they lost the national championship game to Johns Hopkins, 
Walking to that locker room, I soon became overwhelmed by unbridled emotions. I was trying to hold it together one last time. It was a speech I'd rehearsed a hundred times. The essence of what I told them uh, at that moment was this. The word proud is not even close to how I felt about them at that moment. All they had accomplished on the field on the most unbelievable scrutiny and pressure. I told them the roles had now been reversed. They have now become the teachers, and the world has now become the students. They stayed on the high road, maintained their honor, and their loyalty was never questioned. If I had a son, and it turned out to be half the man of any of those players in that room, a man like Reed, Colin, or David, I would be a very proud father. All of us. All of us involved in the events of last year moved on. We we're also drawn back to, to many f uh, familiar favorite activities. I asked my girls recently if they'd like to go bowling again. My little nine-year-old Maggie said, Daddy, we will go if you promise us one thing. Please leave your cell phone at home. <laughs> I'd like to first congratulate all the coaches that are being honored here tonight. Other than a stu the student athletes' parents, their high school coaches remain the most influential and important people in their lives. Between the ages of 14 and 18, a young person's values and character are, are still in a developmental stage. That is why the mission of this foundation is so important to me, to recognize those coaches who shape the lives of our country's youth. The next moment for me is certainly very humbling. I want to sincerely thank the McGuire Foundation's board for sponsoring the, this inaugural event in the name of the former lacrosse coach at Duke University. For Jack Moran and Chuck Rubling, there was never any decision. Is there an alternative to the truth? Is there an alternative to do what is right? These two gentlemen believe there isn't. To this day, I've not spoken at length to Jack or Chuck about the events of last year. They knew Colin and Reed better than I did. They didn't need to hear the facts from me. They knew these men were incapable of these horrific allegations. Not only did they believe, they validated that truth to the entire world by hiring both Reed and Colin to be assistant coaches on the respective high school uh, teams last spring. <laughs> the old saying applies here, it is easier to say it is tougher to do. So in support from the McGuire Foundation and the name of uh, the former lacrosse coach at Duke University, it is my pleasure to present Jack Moran of Chaminade High School and Chuck Rubing of Del Barton with this inaugural award for their unshakable character, loyalty and courage in the face of adversity. I think both Colin and Reed would both concur. Congratulations, guys. You heard Coach say it.